This is Red Off on the Red Entertainment Blog coming at you with a special edition of the weekly MLB observations, not regular season or even hot stove. This is technically hot stove because if you paid attention to my video last Friday, I mentioned the three baseball players who got into the Hall of Fame. And if you listen to my weekly podcast on the radar, wherever you get Apple, Google, or Spotify, please rate, review, and subscribe. There's also a football weekly podcast and a travel podcast. As always, this is on YouTube, so please follow, rate, rate review, whatever you got to do. Weekly movie observations as well. On the radar, media.com is the main website. On the radar, entertainment blog is the Facebook page. And on the and on radar, full forward to it on Blogger, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever, all my socials. So I briefly mentioned who got into the Hall of Fame. I thought I'd have more time on last week's video, but there's so much that happened during the off season in that week to do it. So neutral here with the All-Star Game hat. I'm going to be honest, never ever going to own a Minnesota Twin set. There's a very rare opportunity where there's a logo that I kind of liked. But unless someone buys it for me, I'm not buying a Minnesota Twins hat. I've already been to the ballpark, uh, of course, when they played the White Sox. I have some old 90s, like, small children's Rockies snapback from a former neighbor's house. I don't think I wear that that often. And it, and the other player played for a combination of L.A. and Seattle. This is Seattle-based colors because the All-Star Game was Seattle. Don't have a Mariners hat. Don't have a Dodgers hat yet. Don't have a Texas Rangers hat yet. And I have a Red Sox hat, obviously. So we're just going to go with the obvious. Adrian Beltre got into the Hall of Fame on a first ballot. The reason that is... There's no debate on that is how many players have 3,000 hits, lots of gold gloves, all-star appearances, and at the same time has 477 career home runs. That man retired early, okay? He retired in 2018, okay? he that was At least five seasons ago, that's five seasons ago. If he played one more season, I think he could have got to 500 and been in that rare class of 3,000 hits for a baseball player and 500 home runs. But he is not like Gary Sheffield, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, uh, just guys who use steroids to extend their careers longer into their longer into their four, into their late 30s and 40s, and they didn't have to. You should be like him. You should be like Mike Messina, Mark Burley, guys who retired in their mid to early 30s and even sometimes in the late 30s go, you know what? I'm done because he's 44 years old. So obviously he could have continued to play if he really wanted to, but he, you know, decided not to. Five gold gloves, four silver sluggers, four all-star appearances, led the NL in home runs one year. The Rangers have retired his number and he's in the Rangers Hall of Fame. He even admits that the five-year stretch he had in Seattle where he got all that money from the Dodgers, he didn't really live up to it. But he bounced back with the Red Sox in 2010 to get that deal with the Rangers. So there's no question there that Adrian Beltre is a Hall of Fame first ballot. He should be in discussion for top five third basemen, but it's pretty hard to pick who's the best third baseman after Jack Michael Jack Schmidt. You can go offensively for like 3,000 hits in George Brett and Wade Box. You can go defensively Brooks Robinson. You can go home runs Eddie Matthews or Chipper Jones. If you consider Edgar Martinez a third baseman, even though he's a DH, if you consider Pete Rose there, because again, you know, obviously... A lot of guys on this list may not necessarily be third baseman. It all depends on how you think so. Paul Mallater played every position, including DH. And, of course, Ron Santo got into the Avengers Committee and should have got in at the beginning. And Scott Rowland just got in last year. That's how they view the top 11. Martinez and Mallater, who are DHs, really, or played a lot of positions. And, yeah, it's really your opinion on that. But Adrian Beltre, they put him at number four all time. And I have no problem with that. Next guy that got in is his sixth year on the ballot is Todd Helton. And I've been saying for a long time that Todd Helton's a Hall of Famer. Had his poster on my wall growing up. I never was like, that's a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's not Frank Thomas. He's not Jim Tomei. He's not Jeff Bagwell. He's not Albert Pujols. These are uh, these are first basemen I grew up watching. Like, those guys are kind of obvious. Obviously, Jeff Bagwell took him a bit of time. But Jim Tomei, Frank Thomas, and Albert Pujols are no-brainers. That's where I'm like, okay, cool. Now, Todd Helton is not a Hall of Famer based on the regular statistics. He's not a 3,000 career hit guy. He's got 2,500 hits. He's not a 500 home hitter. He's at 369, so he's under 400, and he's at 2,500, and he doesn't have 1,500 RBI. He is 1,400. But five-time All-Star, three-time Silver Slugger, lifetime 3-16 batting average, Hank Aaron, 
Award batting champion, RBI leader. Rockies have his number retired. He have the Dick Hauser Trophy. Now, for him, I knew he was going to get in. Six years is totally fine. But a lot of guys in the Hall of Fame who have high batting averages like him or a lifetime 300 hitter, not all of them have 3,000 hits, and not all of them have 500 home runs or 1,500 RBIs. He's at 1,400 RBIs. Now, obviously, he retired in 2013. That's 10 years ago. He's about like 10 plus years ago. He was 40. It was time to retire. But again, that's why he's not obvious. There are guys like Tony Perez and some other first basemen who, when you look at their statistics, you're like, you look at them like they don't have 500. They don't have 3,000. They have 1,500. But they're very close to the 3,000. He's 2,500. So he's not at 3,000. That's pretty close. He's not at 500, but he's at, 460, he's at 369. He's also got 1,400 instead of 1,500. So you're looking at it, it's like, how do you put that into equation of where he is on the all-time list now? This is a resource that I use called Jaws. It's by the Jay Jaffe guy, and it takes War, War 7, his own percentage. Every, every like, really um, advanced statistic and current statistic, and they put Todd Elton as the 15th greatest first baseman. And I look at that like, you know, I can see that. They have Luke Gehrig and Albert Pujols and Jimmy Fox and Cap Anson, top four. Not familiar with Roger, Roger Connors, like, okay, but you're looking at someone like myself who thought Jeff Bagel was a Hall of Famer, but wasn't obvious because he also doesn't have the round number. It took him a while. He's sixth. They have this Dan Browders at seven, like Roger Conner. Don't know those guys. I'm not going to debate that. Frank Thomas, we've mentioned the, the, the no doubt, and Jim Tomey, no doubt. Those are top ten. Johnny Mott, that was pretty obvious. Then you get Miguel Cabrera, who just retired. He's probably going to get in, right? Then you got Joey Votto, who's... I don't think he's a Hall of Famer because I don't think his round numbers are anywhere close to Todd Elton. But he will be somebody that will stay on the ballot for the full 10 years. Then you got Eddie Murray. They consider him the 16th grade at first baseman because I don't think he played first base his whole career. It was a combination of stuff. But again, 3,500. So obviously, he's a completely different category of having 3,500 and being a switch hitter with 500 home runs. He's in two separate categories. They put Paul Goldschmidt, who's currently playing, with Mark McGuire, who's admitted to cheesing, Hall of Famers, George Sister, Hank Greenberg, Bill Terry, and Harmon Killebrew, and All-Star Hank uh, Keith Hernandez. If you go down on this list, you get a gluttony of guys like Jake Beckley, Tony Perez, and Ortiz. And as I mentioned, Tony Perez wasn't an obvious guy. You kind of squint to look at him. Fred McGriffin just got in recently is literally, if you look at how many home runs that he has, Fred McGriff, he was at 493. So he was seven away from that plateau of 500. So obviously, and he got 2,400 hits. There's a reason why if you look at Todd Helton, he's got all these numbers that back up with the advanced statistics and the, the current statistics that make him go, you know what, look at this. He's got 61.8 war. And that is higher than Eddie Murray's. I mean, excuse me, uh, is if you look at this war for him, Todd Helton is 17th. He doesn't really move that much by going 17th. When he's, you know, currently ranked as like the 17th guy to begin with. If you're doing this by war. If you're doing this by war. If you're doing it by the original statistic. He is obviously. He obviously, with the original statistics, they put him in at number 15. So 15, 16, again, obvious makes sense. What Jay Jaffe puts him in as again, he put him in at fifteenth. So again, he's in that fifteen to sixteen range in first base is a very crowded thing. So you know what? He made a lot of sense there because again, you just look at all of his advanced statistics. The next guy who got in was Joe Maurer. And I'm gonna tell you this. I have a lot of respect for Joe Maurer, like Justin Morneau, and Kirby Puckett sometimes. And when you're a Green Bay Packers hater in Chicago, you respect Farb sometimes and Rodgers. Because, again, you just know how good of a player they are. Now, Joe Maurer apparently is ranked by war at 55.2. The average of 17 Hall of Famers are at 56. So he's around that if you're going to go on war. For Jay Jaffe's thing, he puts him 7th. 
which I don't know. I agree with most of the top 12 of catcher. Johnny Bench, Gary Carter, Carlton Fisk, Mike Piazza, Yogi Berra, Bill Dickey, Mickey Cochran, Gabby Harnett, Ted Simmons, um, Roy Campanella is at 17, and Buster Posey, who's retired, but will get in, is at 14. And they have Ivan Rodriguez, the great defensive catcher, who cheated in the top three. They got Thurman Munson, Gene Tennis, Bill Freehand, Jorge Posada, Jason Kendall are like guys who are not Hall of Famers, but we know that they were pretty good, and Molina, who retired. It takes you a lot while to get down to Ernie Lombardi, who played many, many years ago, so that's why his numbers don't look that great. And Rick Farrell's. And yeah, so catching is not a position that is very well covered in the Hall of Fame, so I get it. But Joe Mauer does not have round numbers. He does not. He's got a lifetime through a batting average like Todd Helton. But he doesn't even have 2,500 hits. He has 21. And he doesn't have the home run total like Fisk and Mike Piazza and Johnny Bench. He's at 143. And he's got 923 RBI. He doesn't even have 1,000 RBI. Yes, he was a six-time All-Star and an MVP, three-time global winner, five-time silver slugger, and three-time batting champion, and is number seven, and he's in the Twins Hall of Fame. But he's a guy where you have to squint and go, okay, what are his numbers all-time at catchers? Where is he in the hits list? Where is he in the home runs? Where is he in RBI? Because when Ted Simmons got into the Veterans Committee, and I was like, you know what, if you consider Ted Simmons to be a top 11 or top 15 catcher of all time, that's cool. But I'm just going to click on hits. And I will see where Joe Mauer is up there on hits. All-time catcher, Joe Mauer. Do you want to see where he is? He's got the ninth most hits out of catcher. Okay, he's behind Ivan Rodriguez, who just played for a long time and cheated. So Ted Simmons, who, again, played for a long time. So I don't really consider it that. So you got Carlton Fisk, Jason Kendall, Yada Molina, and Victor Martinez. Victor Martinez is not a Hall of Famer. Jason Kendall's borderline, and Yada Molina's borderline. Yogi Berra and Mike Piazza are ahead of him, and he's surrounded by the Carter and Bench. So if you look at it, you have to look at the event. You have to look at it. Where does he rank all time? And that's the annoying thing. If Joe Mauer rank, it, they say it's the ninth most hits of all time. He has the third most doubles, but when it comes to home runs, you can't even find him on this list. He's four hundred fiftieth. So again, it's only the hits and the and the doubles that he's anywhere near the top ten of all time. It really is. And then RBIs. One of wondering where Maurer is. Again, he's 17th most RBIs. That's not good, man. He's behind Lance Parrish, who was an okay catcher and just ahead of Benito Santiago. Like, again, RBIs, he's top 20, but home runs, he's like, you can't find him. And of course, he is top 10 for, he's the top 15 for doubles and hits. But again, you're squinting your eyes and you're just like, what's going on? Now, obviously, the wind of all the placement puts him at ninth best. And you know what? Maybe that is true that he's a top 10, top 15 catcher of all time. You know, but again, that's not first ballot. That's like Todd Helton, where you have to look at all the numbers. Home run hits, RBI, batting average, regular, regular season awards. Did he win a championship? Then you have to look at all-time statistics at each position. That's why I'm like, Joe Maurer, not a first ballot Hall of Famer. If it took him five or six years, I would have been like, that makes sense. Because, again, Mike Piazza wasn't a first ballot Hall of Famer, and he's the greatest offensive catcher of all time. And Ted Simmons, people keep raving about him. He got in through the Veterans Committee. I, that's the part I don't get. Beltre made the most sense. Helton made sense why it took him six years. But Maurer getting in first ballot does not. That's where I got a question. Now then, to wrap this up, Billy Wagner who got 73.8. The dude's got to get in. When he retired, it was literally Lee Smith and John Franco and him, plus the Mariano Rivera and Trevor Hoffman, who obviously, Mariano Rivera got in first ballot. Trevor Hoffman, it took him a few years. John Franco fell off the ballot, and hopefully the Veterans Committee gets him. And Lee Smith, who had the most saves when he retired, did not get in. So that's why it's a little frustrating that Billy Wagner and John Franco have probably the most saves for left-handed reliever of all time. The next guy who fell off because it was his 10th year, but because Wagner didn't fall off, got one more year, is Gary Sheffield. And people are like, oh my God, Gary Sheffield didn't get in the Hall of Fame. Like, no. The reason why Gary Sheffield did not get in the Hall of Fame is because he literally, we had the whole Balco thing with pills being sent to him, the Mitchell report, the, the cream on his knees, whatever it is. He got all these different things. He wasn't well-liked. 
As a Mets fan growing up in his mid to late 30s, he was out there playing the outfield before the DH in the National League, and he literally was a defensive liability. He couldn't run from first to third or score from second on a single or a double sometime. Like, he was a liability. And most people, as we mentioned, that Joe Mauer retired early. Ty Helton and Adrian, uh, Adrian Belcher, excuse me, retired early. He retired in 2009. Okay, 2009. 2009 was not a long time ago. It was a pretty good, a long time ago. Being 2009, it was at least a decade plus ago that he played. And he played into his 40s. Okay? I never once was like, you know what? Gary Sheffield is an all-time great. He's not a lifetime 300 hitter. Yes, you're going to say he's got 1,600 RBIs and he's got 2,600 hits and he's got 500 home runs. But that's what happens when you extend your career and you stay on when you don't need to stay on just because he's chasing after 500 and he's chasing after 1,500 RBIs. That if you're looking at the all-time steroid user, Rafael Paramero, way better player than him. Jose Canseco, way better player than him. Okay? Barry Bonds, obviously, way better player than him. Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, all way better players than him, and they all cheated and took steroids. So he's not even the best steroid user. And Jose Canseco, he doesn't have 500 home runs, but he's a way better player because he's a 5 tool player. So you get it that Gary Sheffield wasn't even the greatest steroid cheater. Then you get Andrew Jones, who, yes, he fell off the second half of his career, didn't have the same production. He went to Japan. But how, there, are, there, are so, there are only a few amount of guys who have 400 home runs in the center fielder and everyone else is in the Hall of Fame. And Carlos Beltran, again, great player, but they're, I think they're accusing him of being on the Astros when they cheated as a coach or when he was his last year as a player. That's it's pretty stupid. He'll eventually get in. We all know A-Rod and Manny failed drug tests. And those are two other steroid users who are way better than Gary Sheffield. Okay, and then Chase Utley... You would have to look at all-time second baseman where he ranks like we did with Ty Elton and Joe Maurer to be like, maybe. Bobby Abreu is one of my favorite players, and he, like Beltran, has a lot of statistics and different spots, so you have to figure that out, okay? Omar Vizcale, just because there's been light of some domestic ab abuse that happened years ago that no one talked about till now, doesn't take away from the fact that he's a much better offensive player than Ozzie Smith, okay? He's got 11 gold gloves. Ozzie Smith is the only one who has more, Okay? He's got 2,800 career hits. That's way more than Todd Helton and Joe Maurer. Like, I'm just, like, looking at this, like, you're looking at, like, saying Omar Vizcal's not a Hall of Famer. But Todd Helton, we just mentioned, has 2,500 hits. And Joe, and Joe Maurer only has 2,100 hits. And Omar Vizcal has 2,800 hits. Like, that's way more than the two guys that you just put in one first ballot and one sixth. And he's got 11 gold gloves. Ty Helton doesn't have 11 gold gloves. Joe Maurer doesn't have 10 gold gloves, 11 gold gloves. And everyone said Joe Maurer's a great defensive catcher. Like, yeah. And there's a reason why 80 home runs and 9 or 51 RBI. Because the dude's not a hitter. He's a gold glove defense of shortstop. That's why he has 11 all-star appearances. So that's where I'm like, people are stupid. Then Bobby, and then Jimmy Rollins. Same as his teammate Chase Utley. You have to look at all-time statistics for a shortstop and go, okay, where does he rank? Andy Pettit, a minute he took steroids. And he also played until he was 40 just to hang on. And you're looking at Andy Pettit. What are the round numbers does he have? Does he have 300 home run wins? He's got 256. What is his lifetime ERA? 384. That's like almost a 4 ERA. That's not good. And he only got 2,400 strikeouts. So he's not even close to 3,000. Okay? And, of course, he played for the Yankees and the Astros. Both are playoff teams. And that's how he got all of his World Series. So imagine if he played for, like, the Royals. He wouldn't be that good. Okay, then you get to Mark Burley, who I mentioned many times, retired early, okay? He retired in 2015, okay? That's like almost eight years ago, okay? And he's still in his mid-30s. And Burley was always that guy who would get the same amount of starts, wins, losses, have the same ERA, walk, strikeouts, innings, pitch, and he was just a workman's guy. He just worked his life. But again, gold glover, no hitter, perfect game, five-time all-star, you know, if he maybe continued playing, he would have finished with more wins. Now, he's got 214. That's not a Hall of Famer. And 381 is close to Pettit. North 1800. So he's not a Hall of Famer, but he's a really good pitcher. And he did it the right way. Okay? Then you get to the K-Rod. It's the same argument we did with Franco and we did with Billy Wagner. They just don't like closers. Because literally K-Rod, Joe Nathan, and Billy Wagner, I, those guys are some of the greatest closers ever. And Papelbaum, the guys that fall off the ballot. Then we're getting to the guys who are definitely not Hall of Famers, but, you know, still give them some credit. Torrey Hunter is an all-star center fielder, gold glove winner. I feel like because Kirby Puckett and Tony Oliva, two other twin center fielders, got in. 
that maybe he should get in. That's why he's staying on the ballot. David Wright, again, he's a what if. If he didn't have injuries and all this other stuff, we know how how little there are in third basemen in baseball. Jose Batista was a late bloomer who just started mashing 40, 50 home runs a season. If he wasn't a late bloomer and bounced from team to team and position from position, that maybe, just maybe, he would have finished with a round number that people would have respected. But again, 344. Imagine if he started his career earlier, he'd be 500. Victor Martinez, we looked at the all-time home runs, RBIs, hits, and doubles for, for a catcher. He's up there in the top 15, 20 for all the offensive stats. Unlike Joe Maurer, but he clearly wasn't the best catcher when he played, and he wasn't the best defense catcher, which, which is why I moved to first base in DH. Bartolo Colon, steroid user, played for a thousand years, played till he was like in his 50s. So all the stats that he had are kind of suspicious because he took steroids, and he played till he was like in his 50s, until he was in mid to late 40s. So 247 is, and 2,500 strikeouts is because he played for a long time. Matt Holliday, he's an all star outfielder. He really is. He's an all star outfielder. For the Rockies, he's one of the greatest players in Rockies history because he made seven all-star teams and won four silver sluggers, okay? And again, almost left out there in a batting average, but only 1,200 RBIs, 300 home runs in 2000 hits. That's a nice, solid career. That's the type of guy that you may give a vote to here and there because the other two Rockies, like Helton and Walker, are in. Then you get to Adrian Gonzalez, who, like Batista, he bounced around a bit before he became an everyday player. But then he got kept getting hurt with the Dodgers, and he fell off a cliff. In 2000, like in between 2015 and 2017, then he ended up on the Mets, and that was it. That that was five seasons ago as a major leaguer, he still tried to play. But again, nice career, 2008, 300 home runs and a 1,200 RBI. The matter if he either started earlier or he didn't just fall off the face of the earth in you know in the in the 2010s era with the Dodgers. If he didn't fall off the face of the earth, he may have finished with more home runs and more RBIs and more hits, and you could have been like, hey, is he a borderline guy? Maybe not. Then Brandon Phillips, great defensive player, but again, started his career where he bounced around until he found a home every day. And then you got to look at the second base statistic. Then he fell off a cliff. Jose Reyes was a great leadoff fitter, not the world's greatest shortstop, but he has 517 stolen bases and over 21 hits with the four all-star appearances. Like again, got to look at who are the all-time stolen base leaders. But again, what are, what does his statistics rank up against other shortstops? It's like Jimmy Rollins. Then you got James Shields who just pitched a long time. There really wasn't anyone that they should have added to this thing like Matt Belisle, Gregor Blanco, Blaine Boyer, Sonny Alcacia, Brett Cecil, Jorge De La Rosa, Brian Dozzi, AJ Ellis, Doug Fister, and Giovanni Gallardo were pretty good pitchers, but I'm not going to put them on here. Jaime Garcia, Craig Gentry, Chris Amenda, Jason Hamill, Chase Headley, Phil Hughes, Kevin Jessen, Jim Johnson was a pretty good closer for a while, Boone Logan, Ryan Mass was a pretty good closer, Brandon McCarthy, Miguel Montero was the best catcher in Dimex history, Brandon Morrow, Peter Moreland, Bud Norris, Cliff Pennington, Kobe Rasmith. Adam Rosales, Margaret Trimsky, Gerald Saltamaki, Denard Spann, Chris Stewart, Chris Tillman, Chris Young, the outfielder, Eric Young Jr., and Brad Zeke was a pretty good closer. But overall, I'm happy that the Hall of Fame didn't vote zero people in or one person, so I'll take three guys in even if one guy should not have been first ballot, and the other one made sense of six years, and the other one made sense on first ballot. And Gary Sheffield makes sense of falling off the ballot. Billy Wagner better get in next year. Andrew Jones better get in. What's up with Carlos Beltran not, and Omar Vizcale? Not getting enough votes. And K-Rod, I don't want K-Rod to fall off the ballot. But yeah, thank you guys for listening to a special edition of MLB Observations Hall of Fame for the 2024 class. Runner Radar Tablock. I'm Radar. See you guys next time.